Today I'm going to show you how to sculpt a pumpkin in Blender. Now I'll try to make this quick because my YouTube stats tell me that most people have TikTok attention spans these days. No God! No God, please no! And YouTube doesn't really reward long form tutorials anymore. If you'd prefer a more traditional long form style tutorial, I'd recommend checking out today's sponsor, Skillshare. I'm sure most of you already know what Skillshare is, but for those that don't, Skillshare is a leading online learning platform with tons of awesome classes where you can learn pretty much anything from leading professionals in the field, from illustration to graphic design and even how to run a successful business. For me personally, I've been really keen to jump into Nomad Sculpt on iPad so I could practice is sculpting on the go and so I've been diving into some classes by Dave Reed who is a very talented 2D and 3D illustrator. In his classes he takes you through a nice step-by-step -step process from beginner to advanced features and even has some lessons teaching you how to transfer your sculpts between Nomad Sculpt and Blender. Which is perfect for me as Blender is my jam but it is nice now to have Nomad Sculpt as an option when I feel like getting out of the office. And right now for the first 500 people, yes you heard me right, 500 people who use my link or scan the QR code on screen, you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So hey, why not give Skillshare a try and learn something new today? That is after you finish watching and liking this video. But thank you so much for Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to that pumpkin. To start off, I just subdivided the default cube and then used the grab brush to sculpt it into a general pumpkin shape. Now pumpkins come in all different shapes and sizes, so try to have some fun with this and make it your own. Now to cut holes for the face of the pumpkin, I first subdivided the pumpkin again to up the resolution and then used the mask brush to draw a face on the front of the pumpkin. Then in the mask menu, I used the mask slice option to cut away the masked areas. Now I just added a little bit of thickness using a solidify modifier and then remeshed using the remesh sculpting tools to generate a bunch of new geometry that I can begin to smooth over. Now we have the base of the pumpkin and it's looking pretty good but not very scary yet. So I used the clay brush to start building out the face a little bit, adding some scary brows and using the grab brush to just make some adjustments to my liking. Then I used the snake hook brush to pull out some teeth. I was trying to go for an evil menacing look. I also like to use the scrape brush to come in and refine some of the edges to get a nice smooth look. I think this is looking pretty good. Now to add those vertical details all across the pumpkin, I used the crease polish brush. But to get the results that I want, I had to switch the fall off to sharp. This gave me a nice fine edge to sculpt these all along the pumpkin, meeting at the bottom and the top. At this point, I also turned off mirroring and added some additional streaks around the pumpkin to add a little bit of asymmetry and visual interest. Now to add the stem, I started with another subdivided cube and then used the grab brush with mirroring active to sculpt out the initial tree-like shape, before then turning off mirroring and using the snake hook brush once again to pull out the top of the stem. To add a little bit of visual interest, I used the draw brush to add lines across the surface of the stem to create a kind of wood effect. And just like that, the sculpting part of this pumpkin is done all already. To finish up, I used the paintbrush to vertex paint the pumpkin a nice orange colour and painted a bit of a deep brown colour for the stem. Now at this point, the pumpkin is done and you can take a moment to bask in the beauty of your creation. But no pumpkin is complete without adding a candle inside. So to see the lighting in action, I need to jump into rendered view and then start adding in some lights. But you'll quickly notice that your painted materials are nowhere to be seen. And that's because we haven't set up a material for the pumpkin yet. So in the shader editor, I I created a new material for the pumpkin, added a color attribute node and plugged this into the base color. And just like that, the color is back. Now I turned down the wall brightness for a dark and moody vibe and added a couple more lights before adding a camera and rendering this out. And there we have the finished results. And hey, if you like 3D printing, you can even 3D print your pumpkin to show off to your friends. And that my friend is how to sculpt a pumpkin in Blender in under 5 minutes. As always, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and comment to show your support and subscribe for more.